Here's one of these fun two-speaker, two-dimensional problems, but at least they're in phase, right? So two speakers along the line separated by 3.2 meters, they're at A and B, and you're at C. You're down 2.4 meters from that speaker. Speed of sound is 343 meters per second as always. And the question is, uh, what's the smallest frequency that these speakers can be at that will give you destructive interference at your ear? And they're at the same frequency in addition to being in phase. All right, so it's really the first part is just a, an interference problem. You gotta think about, um, set up our standard equation. We want the change in phase between these two when they arrive to be, let's see, we want it destructive, it'll be, oh, we'll get to that part in a minute. First, let's see what it's gonna be. So it's two pi times the difference in path. So this one is straight down. We know that one is 2.4 meters. This one, we have to consider the right triangle. Pythagorean theorem, the square root of 3.2 squared plus 2.4 squared equals, it's four. So when you get a number like that, you know you're probably on the right path. If you don't get a number like that, not necessarily you're on the wrong path. We don't always make the numbers come out nice, but in this case, they went with four. All right, so now we know this difference. It's 4 minus 2.4, right, um, over the wavelength, which we don't know. We're figuring out the frequency and wavelength. And then in optics, we put an index up here. But on this problem, everything's in error. And it's just sound waves. We haven't talked about sound waves and different index, so no end there. All right, plus the change in phase. So their source phase is the same, they're in phase, there's no reflections, anything like that, it's zero. There's no difference in phase in this problem. And then this has to be equal to something to give us destructive interference. So when you're doing standing waves and you're trying to get it's open, closed, sometimes you have to have odd numbers. Here we want uh, pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, like that. So you could think of doing this with the 1, 3, 5 odd integers. The way it's usually written is an easier way here. m plus 1 half times 2 pi for uh, m equals 0, 1, 2, etc. This lets you keep the full set of m values. Keep the 0, keep all the numbers. Because you plug in 0, you get a half of the phase. You plug in 1, you get 3 halves of a full cycle of phase. 2, you get 5 halves. So this preserves the case, it only hits the destructive interference cases, whereas every half wavelength would hit half the, hit the constructive ones. So we set it up like that. But then, you always, the tricky part is picking that M, and you could ask yourself, you could worry, is M equals zero the smallest F, right? Is that gonna be true? So one, it's going to be true because you're going to pick one extreme zero or the ex other extreme infinity. That doesn't sound right. But if you want to see it a little bit, what I would do is use uh, velocity is frequency times wavelength. And go ahead and put the frequency in this formula. And then you might see it better. Let's go ahead and cancel the 2 pi out of there. And let's call that 1.6. And lambda is v over f. So we'll go and put our v down here and our f up there. Zero's there. Uh, that equals m plus one half. And now maybe it's a little easier to see mathematically that, yeah, the smallest frequency here in the numerator is going to be when m equals zero. So you just get that uh, the frequency is v over 2 1.6, and the number I get is um, yeah, 107 hertz. Point two. Sounds like a radio station. Um, okay, part B. What is the smallest uh, frequency to hear it constructive? All right. So we can actually do a shortcut. We've done this work. All we got to do is really keep all this work and change the condition on the right. So I think I was going to jump in all the way um, over here and say 1.6 times f over v. That's all the same. And 
there's nothing different about the geometry. We just want the condition rather than uh, destructive uh, to be construct. So that must equal uh, 2 pi times m, where m equals 0, 1, 2, blah, blah, blah. All right. So let's see. You want the uh, smallest f. So again, we have to think about the integer. What should it be? Um, well, the smallest f would be m equals 0. But is that okay? Right? Because that would be f equals 0. Then nothing is happening. You're not going to hear um, anything constructive if the speaker is off. Right? So this is actually why we don't count the 0 when we're doing like standing uh, modes in a, in a tube to hear what sound do they make. We got, you can have infinite wavelength, zero frequency, and then nothing's really happening. So you really can't use m equals zero in this case. You have to go to m equals one. Right, and the two pi shouldn't be there because we canceled it. There we go. I should have that in, and that goes away. So in the end, f is simply v, 343 meters per second, um, over 1.6. Okay, so f is 343 over 1.6 using our new condition, and that answer is 214.4 hertz. Right. So those two are fairly straightforward applications of the interference condition. Now, C. C is one of those a little hard to interpret, right? So I'm going to redraw it for you here. I'm sure it was nicely clarified during the exam. Um, C, they're basically saying they show you where your ear is. You're here in D. Point D, there's your ear. And um, let me just read the problem again. Let's make sure I can read it correctly. Right, so with the speakers, and the speakers are now, we know their frequency. They're at 350 hertz. Right, 350 hertz. There, you're starting out at D, and, uh, and you walk a quarter of the way around the speakers, starting halfway between and in front of the speakers, starting at point D. So a quarter of the way, they just mean you go kind of in a circle. And I'll show you, it doesn't have to be exactly a circle, it's just some curved path. Okay. And the question is, um, uh, what is the question? Halfway around, start halfway with some speakers, I they start pointing, walk around clockwise, the end of pointing. I thought they asked a the question. With the speakers playing at 350 hertz, how many loud spots? Thank you. Yes. There it is. How many loud spots will you hear as you travel from here to here? And they don't even tell you where you are. Just land somewhere over there. So it sounds kind of weird and uh, hopeless, uh, but what you got to think about is what we're really for is when do we have constructive interference? Right? So let's just set up some numbers here. First, we know that F is 350 hertz. We know that the wavelength um, is going to be 343 over 350 is 0.9. 8 meters, and we know the separation is the same as it was before, 3.2 meters. So what we'd probably do is look at the interference condition at the two positions, where you started and where you ended, and see what that tells you about how many times do you see a maximum in between. Because you really can't do exactly the maximum, the maximum in between, because you don't know the path. If you assume it's a circle, you're not going to end up, well, you might end up, no, nope, you'll miss, no, nope, you'll make it. You could assume it's a circle. They didn't really even say it's a circle. So in a case like this, I will look at the two endpoints. What is going on here? Let's see, delta phi is um, the uh, path difference is zero, right? It said it was centered right here. So zero over the wavelength plus no phase difference equals 2 pi m. For constructive interference. Uh, forgot my 2 pi there. All right? So if this is all 0, this has to be the case of m equals 0. Right? So you start out m equals 0 for the interference condition. Now, whatever path it took, if you end up here, let's do that case as well. That's it. We don't even know that that's a maximum. Let's just see what m would it take to get that one correct there. Uh, phi 
minus 2 pi. What's the difference in path there? Oh, it doesn't matter where you end up, the difference in path is the 3.2 meters. If this one goes this far, this one goes this far, if I call that x, the difference we have, that's the key to the problem. 3.2 meters over 0.98 meters, that's the wavelength, I could have put it there, it didn't matter, plus no phase difference, 0, equals 2 pi m. So we can see what order of constructive interference is that 2 pi, 2 pi, solve for m, and for m you get, uh, I wrote it down, I want to do it again, 3.26. But what does that mean, 3.26? Right? M has to be an integer. What this means is that is not um, constructive. It's not one of the maxima on the axis. Just because it's on this axis doesn't mean it has to be constructive. You've done other parts where you say, walk around here and find where it's constructive. And we just happen to have hit a place uh, where it isn't. Actually, it would never be over there. Let's not worry about that. So if you get M not even integer, then it's uh, not constructive. But what that means is you must have passed m equals 1 and m equals 2 and m equals 3. Okay? Because what happened is the path difference was 0 and it grew to 3. Point, uh, it grew to 3.2 meters. So you must have passed every um, distance in between. Therefore, you must have passed 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the answer is 4. You would hear all four of those maxima, and then you would not hear one on the 